This week on 100% Chance of Wine, we made our way out to Goose Ridge, and I'm joined by Meredith Bowman. You're the event coordinator here at Goose Ridge. We're going to start off by talking about how Goose Ridge has evolved and how it came to the Red Mountain area. Well, so Goose Ridge, um, I guess I'll start with this building, you mm -hmm. know, starting from the Munson family that owns Goose Ridge. Uh, this original building is a cattle sale barn and the Munsons got their start in cattle and they still have cattle, but um, they also had orchards and uh, Arvid Munson had this idea where he wanted to plant a vineyard. And so he worked with uh, Dr. Walter Clore and the first plantings were in 1999 mm -hmm. uh, for the estate uh, vineyard. And um, Dr. Uh, Walter Clore had told Arvid Munson that uh, you wanna look for anywhere where they grow tall sagebrush. Uh, in order to find um, a good spot to plant the vines because uh, uh, sagebrush and uh, wine grapes actually have a similar root structure as far as where they look to get mm -hmm. water. And um, we actually have a label called Tall Sage. That's one of our second labels. So I, that's one of my favorite <laughs> stories. Oh, very interesting. Yes. And so um, they planted the first plantings in uh, 99. The first vintage was in 2001. Um, so then this building turned from a cattle sale barn into a production facility and a tasting room. And the spot that we're sitting right now is our original uh, production facility. And the tasting room was just, uh, just a small little section of the building that we're in right now. And uh, in 2008, they actually expanded the tasting room um, to where uh, it is now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the production facility is actually right across the highway. So um, just down the road. Now I read, is it 2,200 acres that you have of estate vineyard yes, here? Yes, yes, 2,200 planted acres. Um, it's the largest uh, contiguous vineyard in Washington state, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And we're also all family owned, which is also really cool for being so big. We only keep a really small percentage of that uh, for the Goose Ridge label. And then we keep a little bit for our second and third tier labels as well. And then we sell the fruit to um, mm -hmm. other wineries. Um, going back to the family history, um, when did they first settle on this land? Was it, I, I think I read somewhere decades ago? Yeah, they're, um, they're a third generation farming family and um, they originally settled in the Sunnyside area. So they were in Sunnyside for many years and they had a feedlot in Sunnyside. Mm -hmm. And then um, with this third generation uh, taking over. I always make the joke when I introduce any of the kids to anybody, she's gonna be my boss one day, <laughs> so I have to be nice to her. <laughs> How important is it that, you know, this is all family run? Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of family run vineyards anymore. Yeah, it, it's very important. It's, um, it makes you feel a little closer to the vineyard. It feels like, to me, it feels like um, the, a lot of the wine is all about the stories and there's so many beautiful story family uh, family stories like um, I was telling one of the guys earlier about Virio which is our flagship red wine and um, he, he is a bird guy so he said uh, Virio now we don't have Virios here and I said well I've been told we have Virios in the vineyard but there's a story behind it Arvid Munson uh, loved the little songbird the Virio and so it's a blend that we always make every year it's been our flagship blend pretty much since we started it's always Cab Merlot and Syrah and um, I heard Val one of his uh, daughters call it dad's wine Aww. the other day <laughs> so here in the tasting room the the, the stories and the wine all go together and being family owned, it really creates that history and those stories that makes my job really easy and fun. <laughs> well, I'm sure, and I'm sure they see, and you see the family making memories out there with them all working together as well. Yeah, it's pretty so. cool to see. It's pretty cool. What else is in the future of, of this red? You know, we, we just finished our, our fourth tasting room in Walla Walla. Yes. So we have Walla Walla, um, Leavenworth, uh, Woodenville and of course Richland which we mm -hmm. call the mothership <laughs> um, but for for now um, we're excited about Walla Walla getting that going and the cider program is another big yes. thing that we just started last year uh, the Munson's grow apples and cherries so it just makes perfect sense mm -hmm. to have hard cider and um, it was a it was a really really exciting thing for us in the tasting room to have something else to focus on um, that's also produced by the family and um, you know not everybody drinks wine um, we, we we like to convert people but it's it's fun to have the cider as well you know, we were just talking earlier about you know people on the east coast and really not from washington state mm -hmm. how far do you distribute and how well 
are your wines received in other locations? Well, we um, we distribute a lot of our second labels pretty widely, like um, G3 and Stone Cap. I have a friend that lives in Miami, and she um, found G3 at her, uh, I think her BevMo store or something like that. You know, one of those big, big liquor stores. Um, but the Goose Ridge label, we do distribute a little bit, but it's not as widely distributed. Mm -hmm. uh, the exciting thing about that, though, is a, we have a lot of wine club members that have visited Washington specifically for wine and have joined our wine club. We have um, people that I've met from Chicago that came here just for a wine trip, um, you know, people that live in the D.C. area. Um, so we, we are growing. It's a little more, um, I guess, more of an exclusive kind of quiet yeah. <laughs> club. <laughs> But um, but but it would be really wonderful to see a lot of our wines in some of the you know big markets like DC and yeah. um, you know te Texans are buying a lot of wine from Washington so <laughs> just things like that would be good. Wow, when you have other people come in, say from Chicago mm -hmm. and DC, how? What's their take on this area? Are, are they also excited about how they're seeing this growth of this area? They usually are, and um, it's always wonderful to know that they've come to Washington just for wine. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's always really exciting that the fact that um, you know they've centered a trip around Washington wine, like that means they know about it mm -hmm. and, and they've had some education about it. There is a little surprised at the landscape. Um, you know, I think a lot of people expect. Uh, Washington to be, you know, covered in green in a rainforest, <laughs> yeah. but it's a little, a little dustier over here, uh -huh. but that's what the grapes like. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's been really fun. And I always like it too, when people come in and they haven't tried Washington wine, for instance, um, Washington Merlots, I feel like are so different than Merlots from anywhere else. And, um, they almost drink like a cab. And when people say, are from a different area and they say, oh no, I, uh, I, I don't want to try the Merlot and I'll say well have you had Washington Merlot and a lot of the times you can convert people which makes me really excited wonderful. it gives you a little challenge <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>
a normal fermentation that we would do might last between 10 days and two weeks. Really? So much longer. And we have in front of me what you feel is might be the finished product? We're making the determination today, the final call, if this is the final, uh, ferment, if we're going to stop the fermentation, but I believe this is pretty close. And what do you look for in the flavor of this ice wine? So what I really find important is the, the balance of the, the sugar and the acid in the wine. Mm -hmm. Because a, an ice wine, a dessert wine, is just by the type of wine is very sweet. So this, these grapes we harvested at 44 bricks. So it means it was 44% sugar when it came in. That's extremely sweet. Okay. And so the fermentation is only going to take that down by a little, by a little bit less than half. Mm -hmm. So there's still 20%, 25% sugar in this wine. So you need enough brightness, enough acidity in the wine to kind of balance that amount of sweetness to keep the wine fresh and lively. And so that's really what's important to me is what looking for that balance. You want to taste it? Sure. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's really good. Very smooth. Very sweet too. So how does this, what do you think of this right now? I am very pleased with it. I, I love the vibrancy of the flavors, just the, the apricot and the peach and the really honey, everything the apricot, is really yeah. lively. I think it's really expressive and I'm really excited. About Are there it. any more tests that you're going to do back in the lab to see if, if this is ready or you're just going to go by taste? It's How mostly by taste, mostly just by the, by the balance of the wine. And I'm really, I'm really pleased with where it's at right now. So I, I'm pretty sure that we're going to stop it right here. Oh, good. Yeah. It's okay. a very exciting day. So we're going to move on from the ice wine and I just want to talk about the wines that you make here. Um, in general, and we'll talk more about your history. Mm -hmm. um, when did you start here at Goose Ridge? So I started as head winemaker in July of 2014. So 2016, this has been my third vintage with Goose Ridge. Mm -hmm. And how, yeah. how has it been so far? Here it's great. Day? It's really, really, it's a lot of fun. And uh, having the, the estate fruit that we work with mm -hmm. is just really wonderful. And just learning and understanding the fruit and really learning how to work with it has really been a really an enjoyable process. The team that we have here, is just a really tight knit group of people and it's just a lot of fun. What do you like to add personally to your wine? What do you say is your signature for when you go out and, and make wine? The most important thing for me is that the, the wines that we're making for Goose Ridge really reflect this place. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want people to, to open a bottle of our Merlot and not just say, oh, this is, a, this is a really nice Merlot, this is a nice Washington Merlot, but this is a nice Goose Ridge Merlot. I really want that to be something that's evident in the, the style of the wine. And so I think that working with 100% estate fruit and really working with the same blocks year after year, you get a really strong feel for what the correct expression of that is in, in a vintage. And I want to talk really quickly about your ciders because Absolutely. that's something unique that you have here as mm -hmm. well. Um, the apple cider, you had a cherry cherry cider, and right. now you're talking about potentially a pomegranate yes, cider. Yes, exactly. So the, the Monson family has been growing apples and cherries for, for quite a while, and so it was kind of a natural extension of the, the wine that we made from the, from the estate vineyard to take those apples and to make a, a cider to go along with the wine. Mm -hmm. And so we... Um, we just we, we will always make just a, a normal hard apple cider, but then we'll have seasonal flavored ciders as kind of a, an accent to that, as an addition to that line. How is that different with winemaking? How do you, what's the process you go about making cider? Oh, it's, it's actually very different. Mm -hmm. uh, just the working, with the working with apples and tree fruit is, is actually really, really different than, than what you do with grapes. The chemistry is different, the process is a little bit different. I mean, it's, it's, it's fermentation, so that's the same, but mm -hmm. really everything else is, is different. Now, I'm, I'm new to, as far as, you know, fermenting the cider and making the cider. What's mm -hmm. a basic process that you go through when making cider? It's, it's, uh, the process is actually not that much different because you're, you're separating out the, the liquid, the sugar, mm -hmm. uh, juice, and then you're, you're fermenting that. It's just the details of the fermentation that are really different. Okay. So you're bringing, so I mean, you're bringing in the grapes, uh, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> you're bringing in the apples uh -huh. and you're, you're getting your juice, you're getting juice from those. And then you're, you're doing the same kind of fermentation that you would with, with grape juice, but the amount of sugar that you're working with, the acid makeup, the chemistry makeup is different. So you need different yeast. The settling is different. 
So, so it's it's a it's a similar kind of fermentation process, but just the the details change. Is it a shorter? It's a much shorter okay. process. Yeah. So you're able to to bring in apples and ferment to completion and have and have a new cider out within a matter of weeks rather than months and or years for for white oh, wow. and red wines. Wonderful. So that part, it, yeah. So because the there's really no aging component to the to mm -hmm. the cider. You complete the fermentation and you kind of adjust the sugar and then you you do blending with with um, different kinds of fruit concentrates. If you're making a cherry cider, you blend in cherry concentrate. Or, so you do that kind of final adjustment, but then you're ready to go into a, into a bottle or a can or a, a growler. What makes you decide the next fruit that you're going to ferment or that you make a cider? Oh, it's, that, that's actually one of the interesting things is because the process is so short, you just play around with a lot of different things, things that sound interesting. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not so good. But you know, there's a lot of different options with different flavors. And, mm -hmm. so. so before you came to Goose Ridge, how did you, what made you want to get into winemaking? What's your background? So I originally, I moved to Washington in 2003 because I, I was investigating potentially planting a, a vineyard on some, some farmland that my family owns in Oregon. It's very close to Walla Walla. So I, I graduated from school and moved out here really just temporarily to, just to see if that was something that would be a, worth doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I enrolled in the, the uh, Enology and Viticulture program at Walla Walla Community College and met a lot of great people and just kind of got sucked into the industry. I had a, 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 a seasonal harvest job at Forgeron mm -hmm. in Walla Walla and just just fell in love with it. And I stayed and I went to, I went to work for Long Shadows Vintners and then I worked for Artifacts Winery, uh, Custom Crush Winery and just kind of spent a lot of time making wine in Walla Walla. Okay. And yeah, it's just, it's a truly fascinating field. Yeah. I mean, I every day imagine. is different. You do a lot of different things. You wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. So it's, I can't imagine doing anything else. And really it's, it takes a lifelong commitment to winemaking. You get one opportunity a year to, to experiment with your, with your process. Okay, now we are in the production facility of Goose Ridge. And Andrew, you're going to take me through, walk me through what you do on a yeah, daily so basis. Yeah, I'm going to show you every, all the tools that we work with. Okay. So this room is what we call the main cellar. And this is where we ferment all of our larger lots of red and white wines. So we have 55 of these 18,000 gallon tanks mm -hmm. in this room. And that translates to 50 or 60 tons of red fermentation or about 100 tons of white fermentation. So during harvest, this is an extremely busy part of the winery, bringing grapes in, take sending grapes back out, finished grapes, new grapes, new lots, old lots. So a lot of work going on here. So this is where all the fermentation happens for the kind of the larger scale operations of the winery. So that's so that was the main cellar uh -huh. that we just walked through. And then this area is what we call the, the micro cellar, which is really more of the boutique side, uh, part of the boutique side of the winery. So here we do more of the G3 wines, G3 okay. uh, range of wines, and then also the Goose Ridge. And so in these smaller stainless steel tanks, we do a lot of the, the Goose Ridge whites. So we do Goose Ridge Riesling, Pinot Gris, Sauvignon Blanc, and the ice wine is also fermenting in one of these tanks right now. Um, on the little bit larger stainless tanks, we'll do some, a few of our larger lots of Goose Ridge red fermentation. So we can do four or five tons of red fermentation at a time. So we'll do some of the Cabernet, some of the Syrah. When you bring in 20 tons of fruit, you can split it up into four, five ton fermentations and you can do a different thing on each tank. Whereas you don't have that level of control when you ferment all 20 tons together in a larger tank. So this is the ice wine tank and it's, it's actually about 500 gallons, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we're actually really excited about it because it's about five times more than we got the last time we made an ice wine. But it's only up to about here in this tank. But really coming out nicely. Really excited about the, the quality this year. And you said by taste, this is ready to go. It's, the balance is pretty much exactly where I would like to see it. Just the, the freshness and the liveliness yeah. of the fruit. So yeah. the next step, just bottle it? So we'll need to stabilize it first. So we'll, we'll need to make sure that the fermentation is actually finished. And then we'll need to make sure that it's uh, what they call heat and cold stable during the winemaking process. And then we'll filter it and then we'll bottle it. So it has a, a few more steps to go through, but it'll be, it'll be going into bottle in the next couple months. So then this is our in-house laboratory. And so we do all of our chemical analysis in here. 
um, that, we, that we need to make decisions about the winemaking. This time of year, what we're doing is we're, we're checking the, the final bits of fermentation. So the wines go through a primary fermentation during harvest, and then they go through a much slower secondary fermentation. And so the, some, there are some lots that are still just kind of finishing up the tail end of that. So you need to do work constantly to make sure that that's still progressing, hasn't stopped, and just making sure that the wines are still safe and sound. So what's he getting ready to do over there? So we do, we do enzymatic analysis, and then you can also measure volatile acidity, which is a, a way of monitoring spoilage. Volatile acidity is mostly acetic acid, which is vinegar. Okay. So if you, if you left it unchecked, then wine wants to be vinegar. It's trying really hard. So basically everything that's going on in here is to try to keep that from happening. It takes a lot of, a lot of work from a lot of different people yeah. to, to put it all together. So these are all of our outside storage tanks. And so this is where all of the wine that we made last year during the 2016 harvest, most of it for our, our larger scale winemaking ends up outside in these, in these storage tanks. After it's completely done with fermentation, after primary and secondary fermentation, then it, it ages out here. And then if it's one of our wines for stone cap or tall sage, then we will we'll bring it back inside for blending and finishing for bottling. If it's a wine that we made for one of our clients, then we'll probably ship it out to them and they'll work on blending it and finishing it at, a, at their own facility. How many gallons do you have out here total? It's all full. Everything out here is, is full. So we're at about to, total, I mean, we only have a few empty tanks. So we probably have 2.6 million gallons of wow. wine on site right now. Here all of the Goose Ridge and a lot of the G3 wines end up for storage. So larger scale production that ends up outside in the outside tank storage area. Yeah. Goose Ridge G3, kind of the higher end programs, they all go to barrel. There's always work going on in here as well. And yeah. there's a lot of, there's always topping that needs to be done to keep the barrels full. Right now we're doing a lot of blending and still barreling down wines that have just finished fermentation. How many barrels do you have in here? In this room, there are about 2,000 barrels. We actually have a back barrel room that has about 7,000 barrels. So, so and you have to test each and every one of the barrels? We test lots. We test, we <laughs> test groups of barrels. So we, have, we might have a group of six barrels that are all the same, yeah. and we'll test that as a group. Okay. But, but it's still plenty. I mean, we have just as many different wine lots in here at this small scale as we do in the main cellar. So the, the front room is mostly newer wines that are 2016 vintage. Okay. And then in the, here in, in this back room are older wines that have been, that have been aging since last year. So the, what will be happening during, the, during this year in 2017 is it will be pulling, and what's happening actually right now is we'll be pulling these barrels out and getting them ready for bottling, blending them and filtering them and adjusting them, putting them into bottle. And then the older wines will come into this room the 2016s to make room for this, the 2017 yeah. vintage. So it's just constantly a rotation of wines moving from, from one stage to the next. The barrel program that is really an important part of what we're trying to refine with our Goose Ridge wines. We really spend a lot of time thinking about the barrels that we select and really trying to choose oak and an oak aging program that really complements the, the wine, the style of the wine and the expression of the site. Like I've said, everything that we do really is trying to, to give the best, best expression of a vintage and the, and the fruit from a particular area of the estate. So you've been in the business for about 10 or 15 years. Right. What have you seen change in that amount of time in this industry? Well, I think that Washington is actually really starting to get a, an identity beyond just the Pacific Northwest, but we're actually starting to get known in the, on the East Coast and the, and the South as a really quality wine producer, and actually a producer of really quality and uh, value wines. So, I mean, if you, it's, you get, can get a really comparable quality to something that you would get that would be made in California from Washington, and it's, uh, it's new, I mean, it's a new industry. I think there's really been a lot of, a lot of development in that kind of uh, Washington identity. Yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of work to be done, but it's just been tremendous, just the recognition that we've been getting as a, a wine growing region. And Which going forward, what do you see? I mean, I really see that continuing to, to develop. I mean, we've really started to get a lot of serious people coming from outside, uh, people from France and Europe and winemakers and wineries from California coming up to Washington because it is such a serious area, because the quality is so good that I really can, I think that's really going to continue to develop. Just the, the magnitude of the industry, things are just getting started. I mean, really, all, I mean, the best things are still yet to come, for sure.
Thanks for joining us today at Goose Ridge Vineyards for 100% Chance of Wine. Tune in next time as we visit another local area winery.